from European waters to the sands of the Middle East. Sail GP descends to the Pearl of the Gulf, Dubai. Old faces in familiar settings. A new team looking to make their mark. Will they have what it takes to compete against the world's best? Welcome to the Dubai Sail Grand Prix. From European waters to the warmth of the Middle East, Sail GP has made the move to the spectacular backdrop of Dubai. Event number six of season four has brought the 10 nation fleet to Port Rashid and the Emirates Dubai Sail Grand Prix presented by Pino Marinas as we get ready to go racing on the Persian Gulf. Welcome to the United Arab Emirates alongside former world champion Emily Nagel and Olympian Stevie Morrison, I'm Todd Harris. The season has nearly reached the halfway point, and with a tight bunch at the top of the leaderboard, this event will be a pivotal moment here in season four. Before we go racing, let's bring you up to speed on what has happened in the first five events of 2023. Sail GP arrives in Dubai for the final race of 2023, with Australia leading the pack ahead of this weekend's Sail Grand Prix. Team Germany are trailing in last place, just behind Switzerland. In seventh and eighth place, Canada and France are both on 24 points, as each team failed to build on last season's performances. Peter Burling's team kicked off the season in pole position in Chicago, but are now struggling to come back after a broken sail forced them to miss points in Taranto. Emirates GBR sit in fifth position after two incredible wins in Saint-Tropez and Taranto. Can Ben Ainsley take a third victory here in Dubai? Spain have so far failed to recreate the magic of their performance in Los Angeles. Even on home waters in Cadiz, Diego Bottin's team didn't get back on the podium. Jimmy's final ride for Team USA sailed them to victory. But what will happen under their new leadership? Rockwall Denmark achieved back-to-back -back race wins on day two of Cadiz, but can Nikolai's team keep consistent form in Dubai to claim the top spot? Australia have enjoyed a podium finish at every season four event so far, yet are still to claim a victory. With Jimmy Spithill taking the helm whilst Tom Slingsby is away, will Australia finally take the top spot in Dubai? And will Jimmy be setting his sights on a head-to-head -head with the all-new USA Sail GP team? So after five events, USA Seal GP finds themselves inside the top three in a tie with Spain and Emirates GBR. However, it is the three-time reigning and defending champions Australia atop the leaderboard with 43 points. Canada, France, the Swiss, and Germany still with time to make a move, but they represent the bottom four teams. Today we have three full fleet races scheduled and that will lead into two more fleet races on Sunday after which the top three teams on points will then be determined and they will have a one race event final to determine the overall champion for this event. Right now, here's Stevie Morrison with today's course map. 
Well, here we are above the P&O Marina in Dubai, and let's take a look at the race course we've got today. The start is always as crucial as they sprint to Mark 1, and then after Mark 1, the boats can turn and sail their own course, trying to find the fastest path between gates. At each gate, they can turn left or right. Remember that sailing boats only go fast when they sail at an angle to the wind, so that's why we see them zigzagging around the course to give themselves tactical advantage. It's a tight course, very flat water, so the boat should be easy to sail. That's only going to make the racing harder to finish first in front of the fans on the shoreline. All right, thank you very much, Steve. As we get set to go racing, just over 1.30 to go before the start of the first race. Emily Nagel, what's the biggest difference from when we saw these boats last time in Cadiz to what we'll see today here in Dubai? Well, they're going to have some glamour conditions out there today with really consistent onshore breeze and perfectly flat water. It's going to be a dream come true out there for the flight controllers today. Three races today. Remember, if you win a race, it's 10 points. If you finish in last, it is one point. So, Stevie, points will certainly be at a premium, especially today. We've said this before. You can't win the regatta on Saturday, but you can certainly dig yourself a hole that you can't get out of. Well, exactly. It's, you know, who's going to land the first punch, I suppose. They've got their big forward sails on, their big lifting foils, so they've got the best setup to get these boats up out of the water. But this starts, of course, the crucial moment in that. Can they position themselves somewhere near that blue mark in the middle of the line? That's effectively the pole position. If you start there, you should be best set to get to mark one first. 33 seconds to go before the start of race number one. We are scheduled for three races today, Stevie, and this is the dance. This is where you want to get into that pole position. Yeah, it's always a balance. Don't get too close to the line. You won't be able to accelerate too far back. Are you going to be able to find a gap through? Australia up and foiling. Jimmy Spitto on the wheel this week. He's taken over that driver position. I like where Denmark is. Australia in the middle of the line, well positioned. Germany and France could get trapped out here. But Rockwell Denmark lined up for the perfect start. It's all about the trigger pull. As we set ourselves up, Australia die through watch for the line to turn white and we go out of the middle of the line it's switzerland but canada the fast charging canadians with phil robertson steering's done well and france has set up with the fastest line into mark one but can they get round those other boats so here we go mark number one is approaching fast race number one at the Emirates dubai sail grand prix and right now it is canada on the inside but france they are going to go over the top of them and the french will get the whole shot Beautiful work. You could see how high they were flying the boat there. Jason Saunders pushing it to the limit. Fly the boat high, you're going to go faster, but you're on the edge of control. And they were so close with Australia, but they lead out around Mark 1, and they're going to be well set on this tight course as we see them set up to do their first manoeuvre. Being in the lead is a huge advantage. So the French, the first to turn away as they scan the horizon and the other nine boats that trail. Canada also turning away. Then you have Switzerland and the Aussies with Jimmy Spithill, as Stevie pointed out, at the driver helm, taking over for Tom Slingsby as he is away, getting ready for the birth of his first child. Good to see the new American team in fifth, sixth position there. Good start to the race weekend. Taylor Canfield taking over for Jimmy Spithill. It's an all-new team for the Americans. They sit in sixth place. Spain, Great Britain, Denmark, and New Zealand having problems early, Stevie. They're in the back of the pack. Just a poor, poor start from those teams here. We can see the speeds that the boats are doing. We've got it in every flavor you could possibly hope for there to catch up, seeing how fast these boats are going. It's only 17 kilometers an hour of wind, but we can see they're already up and over 50 kilometers an hour. And France, where well, they're gonna try and keep it simple here. Left turn at the bottom. Every time you maneuver the boat you're gonna lose distance you lose roughly six seconds relative to someone going fast in a straight line so you want to minimize those maneuvers and try and get yourself sailing towards the most wind as we can see now back in the pack it's a lot harder to do that and it's a real fight for those boats trying to overtake New Zealand already from 10th to 7th but they need to work their way through the fleet and they're doing that right now Got to wonder what's going on with Emirates GBR. They are in the back of the pack in ninth. Almost seemed like they were at a dead stop just moments ago. We'll see if Ben Ainsley and crew can work their way back up the ladder. Remember, Russell Coots, the CEO of Sail GP, said this earlier to us, Stevie. You got to be able to find a way to turn those eighths and sevenths into fifths and fourths. Yeah, when you're in the front of the fleet, you can make your own decisions. All the teams will have had a pre-race plan. But as soon as you start the race, first battle takes yeah, place. That's when things start to change. 
Starting to see a lot of the teams coming off the foils at that bottom gate. The Swiss, they took a left-hand turn and we saw them drop down to 19 kilometers an hour. So suggesting there's a lot less wind at that bottom gate. Leg three of seven. This is race one of three today on Saturday. Before we go any further in the racing action, let's check in down on the water. The fourth member of our broadcast team, Lisa Darman. And Lisa, what are you seeing? But what I'm seeing is that the teams that are not sticking the maneuvers here are really getting punished. So Great Britain had a really wobbly first maneuver and got in big trouble. But right now we have France just really struggling and they're giving away that lead. I'm not sure what's going on in that boat, but something is not right. Yeah, look at this, Stevie. They, it looked like the nose of that boat is rising up and they are almost coming to a standstill. One hole in the water. Yeah, they got a bit slow out of there and of course every time you turn the boat you lose a lot of speed and it looks to me like they just tried to force the boat up onto the foils. You want to get the boat on the foils but if you can put a lot of lift onto the foils that'll help the boat jump out but if you're not going fast enough the whole thing's just fighting too hard to get up to speed and France perhaps just forcing it a little bit because normally we'd expect the boat out in front to be able to stretch away. And Emily we saw that yesterday during practice where Emirates GBR actually voted to basically put both holes in the water and not try to foil because they said it was going to be a little more efficient. Exactly. It's always a trade-off. You can either say a lot more distance and try and get the boat to foil and go fast, which is great when you can get up on the foils, but if not, you're just burning extra dig distance, zigzagging across the course. So it's Canada, France, Australia, the top three right now, as Switzerland now has overtaken Jimmy Spithill's Australian team, and they move into third, now into second, so the Swiss finding good pressure, Stevie, at the bottom of our screen. Yeah, and I think for those people new to watching Sail GP, what's important is that when we do get that helicopter view looking on the top you see the number on the top of the mast gives us a speed and it goes green when they get to 30 kilometers an hour that's because that's the speed you've got to be going to get enough lift around the foils to take the boat off so for everyone watching keep an eye on the top of the sail and you'll get an idea if the boats will be about to take off but we're down now 17 kilometers an hour a bit less wind out on the course so the teams are finding it harder to get up on the foils but right hand side of our shot New Zealand they're up and foiling so expect them to start eating into the distance of the leaders, but Canada, lead change, they're past the French, and what a start for this new lineup. Paul Campbell James on board now as yep. wing trimmer for that Canadian team. Phil Robertson picking up Paul Campbell James with the American team had the big changeover with Taylor Canfield bringing on his crew. The Americans currently sitting in eighth place. They've dropped back to Emily. It's Canada, France, and Australia, your top three. Plenty of lead changes out there and all to play for. The French are looking good at the moment, coming into the mark, still up on the foils. It's going to be all about conserving that speed through this bear away as they head towards the bottom of the gate. So France comes through, gate number three, currently in second. Remember, they got the whole shot to lead the race. Jimmy Spithill now the skipper for Australia taking over for just this event. Tom Slingsby will return for Abu Dhabi. And then you see Switzerland and New Zealand splitting the course going for the opposite side. Will he definitely return? What happens if Jimmy wins here? I know. I know. That's the big debate. He doesn't seem to be struggling with the language barrier on board at the moment, does he? On board that Australian boat. Great first up win for that Australian crew and a really good early part of the race for New Zealand. They were 10th at Mark 1. They're up to 5th. And as you mentioned earlier, Todd, I think that ability to pick your way through the fleet is really hard. Right down now. Just heard Phil Robertson there saying, expect the French to look to set up for a right turn at the bottom as well. So they're always trying to predict what the boats behind are going to do. Currently, we've got breeze showing on either side of the course. The Australians here with 20 kilometers an hour breeze. The Swiss on the other side of the course with 18 and a half. So it is fairly similar across the course. They've just got to watch out for the holes that are appearing and making sure that they don't sail into those and come off the foils. Well, let's go down on the water and get a first-hand report. Lisa, you're seeing the pressure. You're feeling it. Where are you seeing the best part of the course? Where is the pressure coming from? Where's the sweet spot, I guess? I think what Canada was saying, they want to take a right turn. They know that the French are going to do that because that's where there were big gains up the, that last leg. Now we've got New Zealand and Switzerland. They just made gains on the other side of the course. But I think what's happening out here is quite gusty, it's quite puffy, and there's opportunities to flick each side. But it's about it's about linking those those dark patches of water together. But I think we'll see a little procession with right turn at this next gate. 
It's going to be hard for Switzerland to get a right turn from there. New Zealand, they're throwing in a lot of manoeuvres, but what they're doing is keeping the boat so fast as they do it. They're going to have to try and slingshot here, use that extra speed and turn up inside the Swiss. Swiss a bit of a roadblock for New Zealand, but there could be a little gap inside here. Will Burling be able to find a way through? He's, no, he's forced around the outside, and there's that pontoon in there as well. This is going to get really tight for the key. Oh, my word. They've got the windward foil in the water. Both boats fall off the foils, and that got really messy for New Zealand there. They've made an overtake, but they're going to have to re-accelerate. This is the race committee. We are moving the windward gate, shortening the course to 0.4 nautical miles. It just shows you, you see, as soon as you're in the pack, you can be affected by those other boats. Canada, well, they've done a really nice job. They've got out in front, and unlike the French, they've managed to stay out in front and stay fast. It's just the comms there. They're trying to change the setup of the boat the whole time. Every time the wind changes, you need to change the shape of that wing, change the shape of the front sail. It's called the jib on these boats. You need to change power up or depower. You're either trying to get power to get yourself accelerating and move forward. And then once you're going faster, we've got to reduce the drag and get things going forward. So that's why there's a constant dialogue around not only the strategy, but how we set the boat up. So you've got Paul Campbell James, the wing trimmer. He's trying to work out how to make the boat go as fast as possible. And then between Annie and Phil, they're trying to find the quickest way around the course, avoiding boats out. and finding the most wind. So that's why we're hearing a lot of dialogue off the boats. 14 to boundary. Stand by. All the way here. Yeah. Very calm on board Canada right and now. It's Phil Robertson. Trimming, trimming into it, trimming into it. Doesn't seem like there's any problem with him bringing on Paul Campbell James, Steve. He seems like a little seamless mesh right now. No, and I mean, that was a lot of the chat beforehand. That people, here we go, here's Paul going to speak now. So we've got a good game going right turn on the last downwind, but we've got to be quick out. Okay. There we go, talking about what, what they happened here. I think they're probably still set up to go straight because they know by going straight they're going to save a manoeuvre and they've got a big enough lead that they can sort things afterwards. But it certainly sounds like they're having yeah. fun on board. And yeah, Paul Campbell, James, who's one of the most experienced wing trimmers out there, and a lot of eyebrows were raised that USA let him go. Whether that was strategic or poor planning, I don't know, but... It seems a big move to me to lose one of the best wing trimmers in the fleet and bring in basically a complete newcomer to the class. And Phil Robertson smart enough to know that when Chris Draper left the team, he was the best pickup. Paul Campbell James come on board and it has been perfect so far for them. Looking very good here in race number one as we just passed the 10 minute mark in this race. Remember, 16 minutes is the duration of these races. After that, it gets terminated. And right now it is Canada, France and Australia, the top three. We'll learn a little bit more about the course here. France turned to the right, Australia are going to turn to the left, and we're going to see which way is the best way to go. As right now, New Zealand, well, they're off the foils, Denmark on the foils, so you can expect a swap in positions here between Denmark and New Zealand in the short term, but it's going to be most important as to where the most wind is on the course. This is the final downwind leg here, Todd, so places now are absolutely key, and New Zealand are not going to be happy to have lost that one position. Well, the Kiwis having their issues down in that last gate as they ran into a roadblock. Looks good past it. Back on the foils here, though, so full battle now for the Kiwis and the Danish as they get down to this bottom gate. Every point counts today. But look how big that incident down at gate number four was. Switzerland were second, New Zealand third, and now both of them, they've dropped right back through the fleet. Switzerland all the way back in seven, just through one poorly executed manoeuvre. So as much as I've described the conditions out here today as quite benign, quite easy to sail the boats, and Canada are putting on a brilliant display of that, if you make a mistake, you're going to be punished, and you're going to be punished really hard. Paul Campbell James talking about crowd pleasers, Todd. So here we go. Race number one goes the way of the Canadians, and that That's is the Emirates okay. winning moment. The Canucks crossed the line with okay, Phil Robertson, made it look easy. And got the back. They did a great job on that first upwind. I mean, they had a really good start, but what happened, the difference between them and the French was they managed to get the boat set up well, going fast on that first upwind leg, and they gained a lot from doing that. For me, this best performance in this race, though, potentially going to be Rockwall Denmark. They were nearly at the back of the pack, and at the moment they're showing is third. I think they're probably going to finish yep. fourth. It's going to be very tight between them and Australia. But to gain that many places, how valuable is that going to be in 24 hours' time? 
The French will come in and claim second place. The Australians with Jimmy Spithill at the hem will finish in third. And here comes Rockwell Denmark to see if he's point a nice salvage as they were in the back of the fleet. And they're going to pick up the top four points. Jimmy Spithill, wow, he goes over from the Stars and Stripes, the USA team, and now he's flying the green and gold and gets him a third place. So somewhere in the world, uh, Tom Slingsby's going, all right, well done, James. <laughs> yeah. Well, we did hear that if uh, we did hear that if Jimmy wins here, then Tom might have to name his baby Jimmy. So I imagine there's real mixed emotions in the Slingsby household at the moment. But yeah, turns out Jimmy Spiddle knows how to sail one of these boats pretty well. And there, look at that, Emirates Great Britain, brilliant comeback to fifth. Ainsley happy on on board there and uh, you know New Zealand yeah they're gonna be a little bit disappointed there they were on an absolute charge through the fleet got themselves a bit tangled up with the Swiss and wow you get lose your momentum in a race and you can lose a lot of places very quickly and there are the Swiss the aforementioned Swiss remember it was just two gates ago where they found themselves tangled up with New Zealand and Australia was just ahead of them. it looked like the Kiwis might pull in and be able to overtake them not the case Jimmy Spittle ends up finishing with his crew in third place as a Swiss Wow, that was just a case of a great race, Stevie, but one mistake, as you pointed out, dropped them back from fourth to seventh. Yeah, and I mean, we're really waiting for their season four to kick off, aren't yep. we, Todd? I mean, I, you know, you don't like to say bad on anyone, really, and they're, they're a great, great team, and they've got, you know, really good way of looking at things, but they just haven't been getting the results this season, and they need to start getting the results. You know, this isn't, a, you know, this is a league to find out how good you are. It is the best sailors in the world, and you're going to get found out if you haven't quite got everything in place, but they sailed fantastically, right. but they're crossing the line now seventh place and well they're going to be dis well there you go <laughs> don't need to say anything they are pretty disappointed out there and uh, yeah it's a real shame but there'll be some good points for them to pick on but we can only talk about good points right. so long you've got to get re good results right Sebastian Schneider and his team will go back and find out how they got down and dropped off the foils in that fourth gate is that put them really in the back here come the Americans and now this is the brand new team we've talked about it formerly run by Jimmy Spithill. He's now on Australia, getting ready to take over for an Italian outfit. But it is Taylor Canfield and crew, and this is guys we will bring you up to speed with and introduce you as we go out throughout this race. And uh, it's, it's a very talented team, Stevie. They've got certain capability. Yeah. I mean, we're already debriefing there, and they're talking about it's a very different boat. A lot of world champion, but mainly slower boat world champion. So they're going to, you know, they're going to grow fast. They've got basically, if you saw Racing on the Edge, they talk a lot about culture they've got to create a winning culture it's going to take a little bit of time but yeah there's plenty of talent on board that boat for things to be able to get done i'm sure germany and spain round out the field So the entire fleet now begins the debrief. France got the whole shot, looked very good, but it was Canada and Phil Robertson that came from behind. We go now on board with their driver, Phil Robertson. Phil, welcome back to the winner's circle. What a race for you guys. It just seemed like you were having, well, I'll just say it, it seems like you were just having a lot of fun out there with your new wing trimmer. That's nice. It's a lovely day in Dubai, if I'm quite frank. Uh, beautiful breeze, not too, uh, not too windy, not too light, and uh, yeah, lovely race course with fans sort of gracing us with their presence on the side of the course. Well, CJ, uh, you've joined the new team. Uh, turns out you, uh, you guys have gelled together pretty well. That's not a bad start to things. How are you, uh, how are you struggling with this new accent? Yeah, it's very similar to the old accent, to be honest. <laughs> but um, no, it's it's a uh, it's it's a fun team, and um, you know, priority one is to keep everything calm. And we got a little bit heated for one minute there. So no, um, it's when we had the biggest lead we'd ever had. Yeah. <laughs> so we need to we need to uh, keep that calm. But uh, now we are uh, obviously pleased with the way we started. Phil, this is uh, is this the, a new start for you guys? Your best performance so far, fifth in the last event. Is this the turnaround point here in Dubai for you? A little little early to call that, buddy. It's uh, <laughs> race one, and uh, a win's always a nice way to start a, an event. So, yeah, we'll just try and keep the hammer down and get some clean starts and, and race some clean laps. Stay clear of the Spanish. <laughs> oh, I was waiting for it. Hey, couldn't let it go. No. Phil, CJ, thanks for your time, guys. We look forward to seeing you in race two. <laughs>
Well, let's take a look at the key moments in race number one. Phil Roberts has said it's a little too early, but Stevie, with performances like that, Emily, that was impressive. Well, yeah, and of course, the start was so pivotal, wasn't it, for those leading boats. France absolutely nailed it, and we can see as they hit the start line, that bit of water there, a bit darker, they used that extra pressure they had to roll across the front. The judgment here on Australia was absolutely crucial, and whilst it is easy to sail the boats in these conditions, relatively speaking, it does mean there's a lot less margin. You've got to be flying the boat really high. You've got to be sailing the boat on the edge. And yeah, first and second at Mark 1 pushed out to quite a good lead, but then it was on this first leg upwind. And again, we talk about small mistakes. They tried to force a foil fly there on board France, slowed the boat down quite a lot, and that was it. Canada well through, got ahead as Campbell James alluded to there. They got a little bit heated at the top of this leg, but they calmed things back down. Keep it simple, stupid, sail smooth, sail fast. And that's exactly what Canada does. And I think that could be the scene of the day. Get out front early, you've got a good chance to lead at home. And most importantly, Canada stayed clear of the Spanish. Canada finishes in first. Spain finishes in 10th as the fans in the adrenaline lounge on the beach, as Phil pointed out, right in front of the fans. What a great race, Emily. Let's take a look at some numbers. So we saw that France were the ones that stole the show at the start of the race. They had the highest speed shooting downwind, and they averaged that speed for most of the race. But in order to sail that fast, they sailed a lot more distance, and that's where Canada stole the win. 8.2 kilometers compared to 8.9, slightly less foiling time, but ultimately that's what took the win today. One of the biggest stories coming into this event is the change of leadership and crew for the U.S. team as they have undergone a complete overhaul with the departure of Jimmy Spithill. And so at the halfway point of the season, we say a big hello to the new USA Sail GP squad. Plenty of rumors out there about potential takeovers, yeah. no takeovers, who's going to take the franchise, who's not. Who's, uh, who's Jimmy Spittle? No, I'm just kidding. He's the GOAT. So yeah, to be, uh, you know, to be stepping into that position is, is tough. I never turn down a challenge. We've been crying out for an American driver to be driving the US boat. My name is Taylor Canfield, and I'll be the driver and helmsman for US CLGP team. Driving these things is incredible. You know, the boats go faster than pretty much any sailboat in the world. You know, there's nine other boats doing 40 plus knots around you. A lot of different things going on at once, and I think the best drivers are the ones that can, you know, figure out when to focus on each area of the sailing. I'm sure there'll be plenty of pushback. I'm sure there'll be plenty of people saying, you know, what the F are these guys doing? Nobody really likes change until you have that moment of proof, and then all of a sudden a lot of doubters turn into fans. This is not easy. They've all got identical equipment, but the boats are intentionally very complex to sail. So they're meant to be a test for the best sailors in the world. It's very, um, you know, black and white, right? We want to win the season championship. I don't think there's anything to prove. You know, I think we're going to go out there and we're going to race hard and we're going to let the results show. As you may know, Sail GP is powered by nature and the league is constantly striving to reduce their carbon footprint. Well, here in Dubai, they have taken those efforts to a whole new level, instituting a series of new initiatives in conjunction with the COP28 Global Conference also being held here in Dubai. You may have noticed a pop of yellow across our show this weekend as we highlight our race for the future. As Sail GP in Dubai is held at the same time the city hosts COP28. We have been using this event to demonstrate the power of sport for good. I was doing a talk at the Said Sustainability Prize about the Sail GP and joining the Sail GP team and also how we won the Impact League last year and how we have been inspired to think differently, changing our routines and changing our mindset, becoming a better role model for the next generation. Behind me here is a, a solar array, which is roughly equivalent to about the size of six basketball courts. I'm very proud to say that the tech site, at the moment, the energy needs are delivered for 70% by the solar. The remaining 30% are coming from normal power with biodiesel. And that makes 100% clean energy. We are trying to clean the desert. Quite a big mission, actually, because it's quite dirty, but... Um... Yeah, it's really nice to share that with the, all the Yakov team. We have 
5 kgs. Well, hats off to the league. The Dubai Sail GP event is saving 64 tons of carbon, also taking the coaches off the water, race management is off the water, so those are less ribs that are out on the water. They are now on shore. They've got a nice little complex over there with all the monitors, everything they need to see to see the world's best sailors competing here in Min Rashid. Well, we're just moments away from race number two. Let's break down this course a little bit more, Emily, and look at the hard numbers and what we'll be seeing possibly going forward. So, as we saw in that first race, the breeze out there today is pretty patchy. Across the course, there's a number of holes that the teams need to avoid ending up in. But the first difficult decision comes at the bottom gate. Now, by doing only one maneuver, that sets them up for a left-hand turn. So that's favorable, less maneuvers, a lot faster. But the distance to that boundary is really small, so it's quite early for attack out. So they have to decide extra maneuver then or early after the gate. Well, it's day one of the Emirates Dubai Sail Grand Prix presented by P&O Marinas here at Mina Rashid. We've got two more races to go and then we'll be all set up for Championship Sunday. But two more races still on tap here in Saturday. That was the end of race one here in lovely Dubai. I'm out here on the water watching the racing here in the port of Mina Rashid, and the conditions really couldn't be better. It is a glamorous day of racing. The sun is out, it's super warm, and the wind is perfect for foiling. But most importantly, the water is flat. And I mean, this is out of all of the sail GP venues we've been to so far this season, I think this is the flattest water of all. And I'm sure the sailors are super happy about that because that means that they can perform all of their foiling maneuvers a lot easier than usual. And we've got the grandstands super, super close to the racing. They are right there on the water and can watch the F50s round the bottom gate. It is spectacular out here. Let's talk about that last start. We saw all 10 boats out on the line and Team France got out in front first with clear air. Now, I've been racing these boats for two seasons so far, and I can tell you the start is probably one of the most difficult part of the race is just because there's so many boats trying to get to the favored side of the line. And if you're not there in time, then you're stuck in the dirty air of the other boats which is exactly what happened to the U.S. team. They were right with the others, but unfortunately, they didn't have enough speed to break through that front pack and, and get the clear air they needed. We saw Team France, they reached Mark 1 and first and were able to make their own decisions, take any opportunities they wanted, and uh, were rewarded in the end with a second place. Team Canada also, they have a new wing trimmer, a Paul Campbell James, and it turns to be, and it looks to be working out really well for them. So let's see if they can put another win on the board in the next race. All the boats are looking awesome, and I'm really excited to see it for the next race. Continuing coverage of the Emirates Dubai Sail Grand Prix presented by P&O Marinas rolls on. This is event six of 12. We are in season four. Todd Harris alongside Emily Nagel, Stevie Morrison, and Lisa Darmanin down on the water as we prepare ourselves for race number two of three on Saturday. So when we look at the data from the season so far, we've found that Mark 1 position is critical, with 46% of races being won by the team in first at Mark 1. Unsurprisingly, it's Australia, the season leaders, who have the best average Mark 1 and finished position. Yeah, and I think, you know, it shows up what's really interesting is then how do you overtake people? That last co column there shows us what's your average. Do you gain places or do you lose places? And for France, well, that's been an absolute thorn in their side. They've not got off the start great, but they're losing places around the race course, and that's costly. And that's where the Danish have a lot of a super strength. We saw in Mark 1 they gained through the race, and that is a trait they've had all season. They could be the ones to watch. 
And we are just three short minutes away from race number two of three here, day number one. As we check in now, down on the water, Lisa Darman and making the rounds. Jimmy, well, is it good to be back? I know you've got a different flag up there, but um, what's it like sailing with the Aussie guys? Yeah, it's great. It's great to be back here. And man, what a hectic racetrack. It is just maneuver after maneuver. So yeah, very, very tight out there. And Tom's probably sitting watching at home. Um, do you think he'd give you any advice or are you, you guys pretty happy with how that went? Yeah, look, it's just a few mistakes I was making in the manoeuvres that we were lucky to get away with. Again, it's just me getting kind of used to this. And But uh, the team sailed really, really well. I mean, uh, very, very sharp around this racetrack. And yeah, hopefully this breeze hangs in here because uh, the ability, to, I think, to pull off manoeuvres consistently over that many laps will really pay dividends. And we're all loving the drama about uh, what Tom's baby will be named. Uh, how do you think that performance goes uh, to your um, deal? Yeah, we've got a long way to go yet. And out here in Dubai, what's it like um, teaming up with a team that's won three championships? Yeah, I mean, it's just a real privilege and honour to, to get to come in here. And as an athlete, you get very few opportunities to come into a team like this. And yeah, what an amazing opportunity to learn. So yeah, I'm pretty excited. Well, thanks for your time. I know you got to go in the pre-start, so cheers. All right, thank you, Lisa. As we come up on just over 90 seconds to go, there is the race management. They oversee everything that happens out on the water. And again, we mentioned reducing one more rib, Stevie. They are now in the grandstand area overseeing the entire course. Well, there they go. 90 seconds away now, all 10 boats getting themselves into position. And we'll see how the dance goes this time around, Emily, if they do choose to go to the back. This is the race committee for race two. We will move to four POB, four crew for race two. Okay. One less person, or two less part people rather, which means a lot of the female athletes will be taking on that grinder position at the front of the boat. So with one minute to go, everyone makes their way into position. Stevie, the breeze still holding at 17 kilometers an hour. So this is the key. Where do you find the spot? I like your point earlier in race number one. You can go in the back and try to rush to the front, but you might not have the space, or do you try to block everyone else and hold your line? Yeah, I think in this lighter wind, you're better off being a little bit of the boat leading back, and then you've got some control over your decision making, I think. If you're, if you're out the back, you're relying on other people leaving a bit of a hole in things here. In Denmark, we can see now they're dancing around with the Swiss boat. They're off the foils at this stage, but that's not a problem right now. You're just trying to manage yourself a little gap. Try and build a gap that you can then accelerate into and pop up on the foils. Out the back, it's Australia. Well, they're already foiling, but where's Jimmy Spiddle going to send the boat? New Zealand, this is aggressive from the Kiwi crew. Bottom left of our screen there. They're going to be coming in really, really fast, but they're not entitled to room in there. They're not allowed in there by the racing rules, so they're going to hope a gap opens up last minute. Five seconds, watch for the line to turn white, and we'll be racing. Wow, there's no room for the Germans. So back to protest here. It looks like they're over the line early anyway, but that could go bigger. That could be a black flag penalty. We'll find out. It was too much. Penalty USA, penalty for Germany. OCS penalty early start for Germany and Canada. Oh, well, at the last event, that was a black flag for Switzerland. I know there's been discussions in the fleet. One delayed starter, Spain. I know that's been a discussion on things, but anyway, let's get back to the race course. And out in front, it is Australia in the lead. This is the umpires. This is the umpires. Uh, Germany, you've been disqualified. Oh, oh Germany the gets the black the flag, a delayed black flag from Craig Mitchell, the chief umpire. I'm sorry to say, but for me, that's the right call. That was pretty reckless at the top of the line. You could see it coming for quite a long time. It wasn't really a, a surprise last minute dive in front. And that's Germany out of the race. How costly will that be to their weekend? That's really disappointing for them. Not sure if the message has got on board just yet, because they still look like they're on the race course and racing. Certainly don't sound like they know they're black flagged at the moment, but a big mistake. And Jimmy Spittle, here we go. He said, what an opportunity to learn. They're out in front as we see them already being chased down by New Zealand. It's situation normal out here on the race course in Sail GP in Dubai. So out on the water, this is race two, leg two of seven. And Jimmy Spithill really trying to get that first Slingsby child named after James Slingsby. <laughs> we will see if it happens, in fact. But Jimmy Spithill with a great start. Stevie grabs the whole shot. 
mark number one, stays away from the drama, and now off to his left-hand side. Here come the Kiwis with the Americans sitting in third. Yeah, he obviously heard my coaching and did the exact opposite, <laughs> and it worked out really well for him. So great work by that Australian crew. Once again, overtaking boats is New Zealand and the U.S. team. What a great performance by them off the start. Taylor Canfield certainly seems to have got his starting pants on in the fleet since he's arrived here because they've got up in third place at the moment. Now, can they hold that position? This, of course, the thing. They've got a whole fleet lined up behind them. What are they going to be able to do? Let the Americans off the foils here, down at 28 kilometers an hour. So really critical here that they try and get it back up on the foils as they come round the mark, build the momentum, because the Aussies are stretching away now. And they're doing exactly to the Swiss what the Swiss did to the Kiwis. Bit of a roadblock there as everyone has to slow down. The Americans on the inside hugging that line. Meanwhile, Jimmy Spittle and the Australians out in front with the Kiwis trying to track them down. Yeah, and the Australians did a nice job of turning left at the bottom, but then they got out of there quite quickly. We can see France are off the foils. All the boats to the right of our screen off the foils. Those because the wind is going up and over our VIP viewing areas. Unbelievable positioning for the crowds here. They get to see, they can almost feel the athletes coming into that bottom gate. But now we see New Zealand manoeuvre the boat. Can they stay on the foils? No, they can't. Right of way is now with Australia. New Zealand are probably going to have to dip behind, but don't expect Jimmy Spitz to make this very easy for them. He's going to push out the big dive down by New Zealand. Now Australia expect a manoeuvre from them. Can they stay on the foils? The holes that we are seeing across this race course are massive. In the lulls, the area is no breeze. We're seeing it 15 kilometres an hour of less pressure than the boats that are in breeze. So it's really important that the eyes are out of the boat today, looking for dark patches on the water and connecting them together. And the big question is, we go down on the water and Lisa Darman and Lisa, are there many dark patches out there or has it gotten even more puffy than race number one? It's definitely got way more inconsistent out here, Todd, which means that if you're not doing a manoeuvre while you're in a gust, while you're in those good pressure, you, you aren't going to execute the falling manoeuvres. And that's hundreds of metres that the teams are going to lose. So it's getting a lot trickier out here. And I think the further you are in the back of the pack, the harder it is because there's more dirty air across the racetrack. We're hearing or seeing for race number three because we still have one more race to go after this one. What are the conditions we're you looking for? I think my experience of sailing in these Middle Eastern venues is this breeze will hold, I think, through the rest of the day. I don't expect any big increase, okay. but I think we've got a good chance of it staying like this as we go on. As we can see, Jimmy Spitter, yeah. well, seems like he's a, he's a fast learner because these Australian manoeuvres are getting better. That's two foiling turns in a row, a foiling tax as well. So that's when they're going into the wind, they're turning the boat through the wind. There's a lot more drag, it's a lot harder manoeuvre to pull off, but they've gained literally 100 metres over the New Zealand crew by executing not only in the right place, as Lisa said, where there is a bit more wind and you're going fast, but you've then got to execute it really well. If you stay on the foils versus falling off the foils, it's just metres, 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 and they've done nothing tactically different up there. They've just executed accurately. It's quite disappointing to see here that the Spanish team are at the back of the fleet in ninth. When we look at the data from this season, we've seen that they're actually one of the strongest teams usually in the light breeze. So not where I expected to see them today. That was a tight moment yeah. there. Canada with the right of way, and that's a big gain in positions for Canada here. Winners of the first race, of course. France look like they will make a right turn with no more manoeuvres, which would be good news for them. Can Denmark get through there? And we see top of our screen, the United States, they're struggling to get some good manoeuvres together. Down to sixth at the moment, so they are losing places, but brilliant start for this new American team. That goes without saying, as Canada choose to turn left, two manoeuvres in quick succession. They're splitting the course with the French. Let's see who finds the most wind. Australia out in front, New Zealand, Canada, France top four, Denmark now in fifth with the Americans in sixth. And this is where it comes into play, Stevie. If you're six, seven, eight, can you move up and pick up maybe one or two spots? So if you're Americans in six, if there's any way that they can overtake the Danes and the Canadians, they'll do themselves a solid going into championship Sunday. Yeah, huge points. We just saw distance the leader on the left there. The Spanish 950 meters behind the Australian boat. What gets me as well with that, I think, I, mean, I find surprising, because it's a flat water venue, harbour, doesn't look like a totally different venue to Los Angeles, where we raced in that fantastic venue there. But it was similar wind, flat water, and the Spanish looked like they had a super strength in that kind of condition. Exactly. Spain winning the Los Angeles event. 
as they were able to pull that off, but they were sixth in the last event on home waters in Cadiz. So they are looking for a big bounce back here in Dubai. Meanwhile, Australia with Jimmy Spithill at the hem out in front. They are through gate number four and onto this lake. So it'll be up one more time for the Australians and then down and then that right hand turn to the finish line as they make their way through the Dubai gate. Good mode we heard from Jimmy Spittle, so he's happy with how fast they're sailing the boat. You can either sail the boat quite fast, but you're going to sail more distance or a little bit slower and then potentially minimize the distance. And you've got to choose that. And that's when you hear them say mode. And I'd be pretty happy if I was the Australians with the numbers I'm seeing at the moment. 45 kilometers an hour average speed on the Aussie team compared to 41 kilometers an hour of the second place team, New Zealand. The Aussies have spoiled 95% of this race. And Stephen, we joke about it with Jimmy going on board the Australian team. That is the nation of his birth. And we talk about the accent and all this stuff. But the communications are key. And when you have someone like Tom Slingsby and a crew that he's kept together really for three years, there's going to be a little bit of communication issues starting things off. Yeah, I think the bigger thing as well, I'll just hear from Carl quickly. No problem from no threat behind. No threat behind. We've heard that come off the Australian yeah. boat a little bit before, haven't we? But um, yeah, I think the bigger deal is actually the choreography on board. And, and I, I've got to say, I thought when it went to four crew on board, as we can see now, there's just four of them on the boat. I thought that would make it harder for Jimmy yeah. because he's more skilled. They've had less practice time and it's who does what and when. Now, a lot of the boats, the flight controller flies the boat all the way through the manoeuvre, both boards when they're in the water. That's how a lot of teams do it. That's not how Australia does it. Interesting question in itself, that. But so Jimmy's having to fly the boat, one of the foils through the maneuver, and that's not something he would have done with the US team. So again, he's having to learn that. He says he's learning, but isn't that a great lesson to all of us? Doesn't mention how old, doesn't matter how old you are, there's opportunity to learn. Jimmy Spithill with multiple America's Cup titles. He's still looking for a Sail GP title. Does he get it done here on a borrowed boat? And on the top left now, we've got the ride heights of each team, so we can see who's foiling and who isn't, but also how hard they're pushing the foils. Interestingly, the Swiss, when they've been up on the foil so far today, they're one of the highest flying teams at 1.1 to 1.2 meters, so really starting to push that ride height. It's a little easier today. Normally a 10-boat fleet is now reduced to nine. If you were with us at the start of this race, Germany getting the black flag. So basically disqualified because they barged at the start. Stevie, I'm sure that's something we will look at multiple times after this race is over. But right now it is all Australia all the time. Jimmy Spittle at the wheel. New Zealand, France, Canada, Switzerland, top five. Yeah, and Canada are going fast here, Todd. Canada are the boat on the move, that is for sure. Nice manoeuvre by the Australians. New Zealand crew, a bit surprised with their decision-making at the bottom of the course. They put in an extra manoeuvre, and I don't understand quite why they did that, but it's showing up now. They're back to fourth as it sits on the paper at the moment. I think they'll actually be a little bit closer. They're right in that battle for second. It's going to be really tight. If the New Zealand crew can make it to gate five with no more turns, it's tight. But if they can do that, they will be back up to second. But I think they might have to do another turn. Let's see what they choose to do. Here they go. They turn the boat through the wind here, Todd. They're going to have the right of way as they come back in. But you see that manoeuvre, how much yeah. speed. Every time you turn the boat, and in this wind strength especially, where it's hard, very hard to guarantee and very hard to execute a foiling manoeuvre, the losses are big. You've got to do... Every manoeuvre's got to have a very good reason for doing it. But Canada are turning right, New Zealand are turning left, and this is our final downwind leg. we four dives right, aren't we? France is going to follow Canada on that right-hand side of the course. New Zealand splits away in the distance. The Aussies sailing away to a victory here in race number two. Remember, Australia finished in third in race number one, so their percentage right now, winning percentage, is very good. Top three both races. A really impressive performance from the Canadians in this race. The Australians, they got to mark one in first and likely going to finish in first. But the Canadians, they got to mark one in eighth, and they have sailed all the way up through the fleet into third. Really impressive sailing to keep it on the foil so much. Yeah, New Zealand are going to do well here. I think they're going to have just three manoeuvres on this downwind, and we heard Phil Robertson saying four. They can plan out, they can see on, their, on the screens on their wing sail how many manoeuvres they're going to have to do, and you're trying to juggle, do I do the manoeuvre early, do I do it late? Do I do it on this leg, do I do it on the next leg? New Zealand did an awful lot of manoeuvres on that upwind leg. I'm not entirely sure they made the right call there, but it should work out well for them on this downwind, and they're going to be chasing the Australians to the Finish. Stevie, quick learning in situation as we look on board Australia. People always ask me, who's flying or who's driving the boat when they're doing the crossover? Because it seems like it's ghost riding. 
Good. I can guarantee you it's not a ghost riding, Todd. They're taking it in turns, so the flight controller will have the boat while the driver crosses the boat. But as soon as the driver crosses the boat and is on the new side and on the wheel, then on the wheel, they've got a control to do the flight control, and then the flight controller runs across again. Team choreography, they all do it a little different. Well, the first time I'll say this, it is the Emirates winning moment with Jimmy Spittle in Australia winning race number two. Starting to just think maybe that crew's awesome and Tom Slingsby's, you know, he's got an easy life back there. <laughs> that was a good feeling when we did, hey? So yeah. Australia gets the win in race two. It looks like the Kiwis are going to hold on to that second position. A nice bounce back for them because they finished sixth in race number one. Coming back with a second is nice. And look at Canada. A one and a three for Phil Robertson and his crew. So a little different setup on these boats for the second race of the day, just four crew members as opposed to six. It'll be interesting to see if the wind picks up and they go back to six or they stay at four as France will come in and pick up a fourth to go with their performance of second in race number one. And this is all about points. Remember, it's 10 points for the win all the way down to one point for last place. Yeah, solid one for France as well. I think France, you know, when we think about the season as a whole, and, and we probably should get talking about that at some stage, Todd, because we're, we're pretty much halfway through now. So these points are absolutely crucial. And France, well, they've been struggling a little bit, whereas Denmark, they're coming across in fifth. Denmark have been so consistent. They're sitting in second in the championship at the moment. Good, solid year for them so far. But France, they nearly made the grand final last year. They, yep. they lost in that thrilling match race with Ben Ainsley in the challenge to get to the grand final. But they were fourth overall last season brilliant performance huge kind of announcement of their arrival sure. in sale gp but they've struggled in season four and i think france is the team that will feel they have to make the final here if they're going to have any hope of making the final in san francisco and a race for what is now two million dollar prize money that's going to be some high pressure high reward race and that comes up in july july 13th and 14th in san francisco it'll be the grand final speaking of france they got second in race number one they get a fourth in race number two so good consistency and Denmark going four and five on the first two races now here is the battle for the final point Stevie position Spain, seven eight nine and Spain have got the right of way here Todd they're entitled to room but Great Britain are on the foils and if you're on the foils you've got a lot of maneuverability they're going to be able to slingshot around the outside great move by Emirates Great Britain although for a seventh place yeah. that's not where they're used to finishing Spain fall off the foils they wallowing in eighth but they will be ahead of the United States so after that promising start they were second at Mark one or third at mark one on board the u.s boat but there you go there's still there's work to be done it's not easy this f50 racing yeah emirates gbr this is their home regatta they finished fifth in race number one a seventh of race number two they're gonna need a big bounce back in this third race if they have any shot of making the event final tomorrow remember it's just the top three teams in their last race on sunday and spain will just creep across the line in eighth place with the usa going back to ninth they finished eighth remember in race number one feels like we, we'd go well in the pre-race. So two races down, now. one more race to go here at the Emirates Dubai Sail Grand Prix presented by P&O Marinas. So the debrief now takes place on all the boats with one more race just to go here on the final day, and then we'll tabulate the points and tell you who is in a top three position. But remember, two more fleet races tomorrow before that event final where only the top three teams will compete. Go down to the water now. The winning team in race number two is Australia. Their new captain, Jimmy Spithill, but he's a familiar face to us all. Jimmy, you look good in the green and gold. Uh, adjusting to the team and adjusting to the comms with just four people on board. Has that been difficult for you? Uh, not really. I mean, uh, it's obviously a pretty high quality team. So, yeah, it's more more been a case of me just trying to fit in and, and not uh, make too many mistakes. Well, and on that, Jimmy, I don't know, is Tash around on board there? Tash, uh, obviously you've had to do a bit of work on the on the grinding pedestal today, but are you managing to keep Jimmy on track? How many mistakes is he making out there? Because it looks pretty good from where we're sat. Yeah, I think it was a pretty good race. It's a quick turnaround when we went four up. We got one, one reaching shot of the line to practice, and then we were just thrown into it. But at least we've had a couple of days four up sailing, so we kind of just went straight into it and all was good. Well, the odds in Vegas, Jimmy, have just gone up on the new Slingsby child being named James. So we'll see how that plays out here on race number three. Uh, conditions look to be about the same. Any changes for you for this final race? 
and a quick review now of our incident at the start. So from a long way out, we could see Germany were attempting a slingshot maneuver, coming in at the bottom of the screen with pace, but no rights. From 15 seconds out, it was obvious the Swiss were planning on shutting them out. But Germany took the risk and barge in at the mark. That's breaking the rules, and so they get themselves disqualified. Meanwhile, Oz hit the line with pace, 48 kilometers an hour, and Mark one in first. Well, and then, yeah, of course, you get yourself out in front, a good start, and brilliant start by the US team. I think, you know, Taylor Canfield's really hit the ground running with his starting, two good starts on that US boat. But it's really about accuracy of manoeuvres, how you do them and when you do them. And Australia, well, they look pretty slick for a, for a new crew, pretty slick on board New Zealand as well. But they're making some little mistakes in and around the middle of the race. Don't think it'll be too hard to fix for Ray Davis in the coaching booth, but they're not gonna like Jimmy being out in front of them. So let's take a look at the numbers. After two races, it is Australia and Canada sitting on top with 18 points. France in third. So if this was Sunday, those three teams will be battling it out. New Zealand on the outside looking in right now in fourth place. There you have Rockwell, Denmark, Emirates, GBR in sixth on 10 points. Switzerland, USA, Spain, and Germany with some work to do still in single digits, but still one more race to go here on day number one. Well, the sun's beginning its slow descent in the sky here in Dubai on day number one of the Emirates Dubai Sail Grand Prix presented by P&O Marinas as we get ready for the final race of the day. And then it'll all be on for Championship Sunday with the points being tabulated at the end of this first day. Well, early this week in Dubai, the Swiss F-50 catamaran was crewed entirely by the female athletes of Sail GP, an all-star crew loaded with some of the best sailors on the planet. They took to the Persian Gulf and put their talents on full display. Now, the league is committed to making inclusivity a top priority, and with world Olympic champions and world gold medalists, plenty to choose from, and they certainly gave us a great show out on the Persian Gulf. Hannah, it was the first time that you had an all-female crew on an F-50. How important was that moment? Yeah, it was a massive moment. I think, you know, we've all been just desperate to, to get on a boat and just learn uh, and learn all the different roles. And so to do it all together was just unbelievable. And to get the boat up and foiling and, and ripping around was just such a cool feeling. We had like such good learning and just to have those opportunities. And yeah, we just need to keep pushing and, and get more. I think it's super important, you know, to, uh, to develop the Women Pathway program. And uh, Team Swiss is uh, really proud, you know, to be the first uh, team ever to organize the first uh, female uh, athlete sailing station. These female athletes have been involved in SARGP for almost two seasons now, but often not been given a chance or the responsibility to be responsible for the boat themselves. Oh my gosh, we've got some amazing female sailors in, in all of the teams, you know, and just with such different skill sets as well, which is perfect for the F50 because all the roles are very different and require different skill sets. So it's really, really exciting to see the level, level of talent we've got. Yeah, it's pretty exciting and it's cool to see how many of us, like as soon as we get the opportunity to jump on the boat, even if it's not much reason, even if it might be 15 minutes, every single one of us like jumped up and was like, yes, I'll take it. Like, please, can you have, can please can we have more time? So it's, yeah, I'm sure whenever we get asked for this opportunity, we'll never waste it. Everyone really appreciated the chance to, to take on their roles and just fully get immersed in it and have all women out there. So I think, yeah, it's a really good first step. To take the first step is always the hardest, so we've done that now, and so yeah, we're just looking forward to the future. So now everyone gearing up for the final race of the day. This is event six of 12 in season number four. This is the Emirates Dubai Sail Grand Prix presented by P&O Marinas with race three dead ahead. All teams getting ready to end the day on a high note. Well, that was the finish of race number two here in Dubai. And I'm out on the water and I'm seeing all 10 F-50s. What they're doing right now is they are linking up and attaching their boat with their chase boat. And so right now after the race, all of the athletes I'm sure are pretty tired. And, and so there's food being 
passed on board drinks, water, Red Bull, whatever it is, just to get the athletes uh, refueled again for the next race. Uh, another thing that happens on board is the sailors talk within themselves and they talk with the coach. So I just saw the U.S. team. They would be talking with Mark Ivey, their coach, who is sitting on land at the coaching station, which is something new that we've just added to Sail GP. So all the team's coaches are on land on their computers and they've got actually a really great view of the race course and they are connected with the sailors while they're racing. So if you use it right, the coach can be a really great tool while they're racing. They just have a really great vantage point from where they are and they have all the data right at their fingertips. Now, the US team, they just got a new ownership. And so most of the sailors are completely new to the boat. Their driver, Taylor Canfield, isn't so new. He was the season one flight controller. So he knows a little bit of his way around the boat, but I'm sure these first few events, especially this one, will be will be a bit tough. The learning curve will be vertical, I'm sure. But they are learning so much and and I'm keen to see how how they grow from here. I see all of the boats right now. They're slowly creeping back to the start line for our last race of the day. And I'm excited to see how this goes. Who's going to get the win? for our last race of today here in Dubai. Beautiful day to go racing here at the Emirates Dubai Sail Grand Prix presented by p and Marinas. Todd Harris, Stevie Morrison, Emily Nagel, and Lisa Darmanin with you as we get ready for the final race of the day. Well, as we mentioned, part of Sail GP's efforts to reduce the carbon footprint, they have installed a solar array the size of six basketball courts, not to mention moving the coaches and the race management on board. And there they are, six basketball courts worth of catching the solar rays. Sail GP certainly powered by 100% clean energy on shore. And that is an initiative they've been working hard towards with the COP28 also in town. Well, just a short time ago, Lisa Darman and catching up with the USA squad, Taylor Canfield and their female athlete, Sarah Stone, doing a great job in the first two races. The Americans finishing in eighth place in race number one and ninth place in race number two with a third race still to come. Well, Taylor, it was looking pretty good off that start. You guys must be pretty happy with that. And then obviously just trying to execute maneuvers in these conditions looks really tricky. Yeah, absolutely. There's a... Uh... You know, a lot of a lot of elements of the racing out here, and uh, you know, the, the starting today is, you know, so far a strength. So, um, yeah, you know, to get to the reach mark in second on the Aussies is awesome, and uh, just you know, little things we need to clean up around the course. But um, yeah, I, again, it'll come. We just and, need to be patient with it. And how does it feel to make your debut as a driver here at Sail GP Racing? Oh, it's incredible. You know, I, I just have uh, so gracious for the opportunity to be a part of it, and uh, yeah, you know. We've, given uh, the four days that we've had together as a team, you know, leading up to the event, uh, things are going well so far. So happy about it. And we were also joined by your female athlete, Sarah. How does it feel to make your debut in South GP all together? Yeah, it's awesome. It's cool to join a new team and everybody's learning together and figuring it out. Um, it's pretty good that we've got a couple guys who've sailed on the boats before in different positions. And so we can give each other tips and tricks and try to <laughs> accelerate our learning curve as much as we can. And how was the grinding? You look like it's pretty hot out here in Dubai. And um, did you have fun up there um, turning the handles? Yeah, it's good. It is warm, um, but you're not really thinking about that when you're racing. So it's all good. Yeah, it's fun. Well, thank you both. Great to see you here and good luck for the final race. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks. Lisa Darman a moments ago out on the water as we come up to under two minutes to go before the start of the third and final race. Emily, question to you. How soon do you think until we do see one of the female athletes driving one of these boats? The goal is for season six. I'd love to see it sooner. Seeing all of the women getting out on the water together, having an opportunity to train thanks to the Swiss team for lending their boat. I thought that was a brilliant initiative. And honestly, I look forward to more teams stepping up 
and providing more opportunities for the women to get time on the boat. And Stevie, with all the gold medals and world titles out there on that boat the other day, that was impressive. Yeah, I mean, it's a huge lineup and there's a huge amount of talent. But as Nathan alluded to in the bit of the interview he, he gave, you know, they, they just haven't had the opportunity as of yet to get enough time. And it's a brilliant start by the Swiss team. And I echo what Emily says. Let's, let's give them more opportunities, more time on the tools, as it were, to learn the roles. And, and there's no lack of talent, that is for sure. All right, 1.10 to go before the start of the third and final race of day number one here at the Emirates Dubai Sail Grand Prix. They'll get themselves into position, Stevie. Who needs this the most? I mean, I look at the bottom of the board. Of course, you're looking at USA, Germany, Spain. They need some points badly to get themselves in there. But Emirates GBR, I think, is the team that I would lean towards. They need a big win. I think they need a big win the most, but they've probably got that confidence from other events. I'm going to go with France need another okay. good result because if they can come out of day one in the top three, it's going to do masses for their confidence. They're a brilliant heavy weather team. I think historically they've struggled in the lighter winds. It's pretty light. That's the coach view there. What a view they've got looking in on things. But, of course, they're even more on board the boat with all the data as we see now right hand side of screen there's our start line the blue point in the middle that indicates the fastest place to start the shortest distance and the quickest time to mark one from there if you hit that fast but it's all about being fast australia jimmy spitter he leaves, loves to wind this australian boat up and come in using speed he's on the foils 12 seconds to go but it's great britain at the bottom of the line france at the top of the line controlling things at the moment here we go they're going to wind it up switzerland perfectly positioned in the middle Who's first on the foils? Great start out the top of the line by the French, and they are foiling. They'll be fast from there into Mark 1, that's for sure. The French are in good shape, Switzerland in good shape, and I think it's going to either be France, Switzerland, or Great Britain leading at Mark 1. Here the French go. Coming up to mark number one of the third and final race of the day. You've got Switzerland and France neck and neck. On the inside, you've got Emirates GBR and Spain making their presence felt. Canada nowhere near them. That's always a good sign with the Americans and the Canadians out the back and Jimmy's Piddle on board Australia. Whoa, look at this. French, look at they that. Oh, they pushed it too hard. They were trying to fly the boat higher and go fast to get across that Swiss boat, but they pushed it too hard. Massive error on board the French boat there, pushing too hard. Advantage Switzerland. They turn away and from here, this is a huge opportunity for this young Swiss crew. They need a result, and they've got no excuse but to deliver a win from this lead at Mark 1, as in the pack is tight. Brilliant boat handling by the Spanish team there, who almost went into yeah. the back of the French team, but narrowly missed. Well Light, done for them. Lightning reactions, yeah, great spot that, Emily. There, we see the manoeuvre on the boundary here for the Spanish. Good manoeuvre by the Australians. Great Britain first to turn away. They're in clear wind. They'll be challenging hard, but nice manoeuvre by the Swiss, and they've got to keep it cool and calm now. Sebastian Schneider, the driver for Switzerland. Switzerland currently sitting in ninth place overall in the season standings. This would be huge for them and their confidence as they try to push themselves into their first event final. And it is Great Britain, Emirates GBR, Ben Ainsley. You can't keep him down for long. Here it is one more time, Stevie. Look, at, look at, see that foil on the right-hand side there. That, that you're trying to push the boat to the limit. Jason Saunders, flight controller on the French boat there. I mean, he's just pushed it a little bit too hard. They're flying. In fact, I've got to say, sorry, it's not Jason, it's Contam flying it in this four-person on board situation, and that's the choice you make. Do you have more hands on the grinder? Do you not? Well, it's a big mistake. They're massive, massive error. And that's the thing. You risk it, but if yeah. you push it too hard, you push it too far, you fall off the foils, and that's it. Disaster's often only a few millimetres away. And as they get down to gate number two, the Dubai gate, we check in down on the water with Lisa Darmanin. Well, Todd, it's still looking really tricky out here, and we're seeing that the back of the pack, they're getting into that dirty air, and they're not being able to get on the foils. But there is a little bit more breeze on the left-hand side of the racetrack. So where Switzerland and Great Britain are going, that's where I'm sitting right now, and I'm feeling really good breeze. But then I think we're going to see the teams actually cross all the way over to the other side um, and get and get the breeze that's coming over the seawall over there. So it's a pretty tricky race course, but it looks like the teams have found a bit of a pattern out here. We've got the best sailors in the world, so they'll try to solve the riddle that is the race course on the third and final race of the day. It is still Switzerland out in front. Emirates GBR trying to track them down. Spain, their best showing so far. They sit in third with Australia in fourth.
There we go, Germany, their fifth at the moment. It's good performance by that. We're here in here. They're just taking what's called the differential. So one of those rudders is pulling the boat down. One of them's lifting it up on the other side. And they're constantly adjusting that batter as they've done that big turn down to make the mark. Stuart Biffle's calling all those settings. He's the wing trimmer. He's in charge of making the boat go faster. And there you go. Nice debrief from your wing trimmer there. Lovely rounding. Well, Eric Heil's going to like to hear that. And it was smooth by the German boat. They need a good result, really. We saw early season they came in with a bit of a bang. They looked good. But fifth, that would be a great result for them going into day two. Especially since they were black flagged in race number two for barging the line. So they did not get the points they wanted, certainly in race number two. And they sat that one out. Yeah, that's a good point. They, do, they really need a good result. That is for sure. As we can see now, we've got boats coming down the course on the right-hand side of our screen and boats going up. It's a little bit confusing for the leaders. They're going from right to left on the screen, but for France, for Canada, for the United States, they're going from left to right, still working their way down to gate two. In this light wind, you fall off the foils, you just speed differences are absolutely massive and those distances open at an array of knots definitely not the result that the French were looking for, but the British and the Spanish have found their form since the last race. Both of them are averaging around 79% fly time, average speed. At the moment, the Swiss are the fastest on the course at 38 kilometers an hour, and the British and Spanish slightly slower, but still mostly up on the foils. It looks like it could have a lead change here. Great Britain first to manoeuvre on the boundary. Where are the Swiss going to come into the shot? It's a good manoeuvre, but the British are ahead. So that's a gain for Ben Ainsley. He's found that bit more wind. Spain finding a bit of form. Australia a bit of form. It's going to really turn the leaderboard for this event upside down. New Zealand back in sixth. They'll be looking to try and make some places. But yeah, France, I mean, isn't that high-performance sport in a nutshell, Todd? Right. France were millimetres away from getting round the top of the Swiss and then leading away at mark one, potentially saving their season now they're back in 10th have they potentially blown their season in that one moment yeah France certainly pulling off a maneuver that they did not want to have here in the third and final race after great performances in the first two races finishing in second and fourth and this is really going to hurt their chances to make the event final Stevie picking up a tenth if this is the way it stays well it would be, it'd be absolutely disastrous yeah. for them yeah I mean they've sailed so well and so consistently and, and the start was absolutely mm -hmm. brilliant by Contan and I know that's something he's been really focused on but it's always the battle, isn't it, in anything? How hard do you push? And we criticise the crews when they're not flying the boat high enough, when they're not pushing hard right. enough. But if you do push too hard, there's your consequence. Right now it is Emirates GBR holding that one hole out of the water, so they call that H1, as Ben Ainsley almost perfected that on practice day as he sailed to a practice day race win, doing the exact same thing, being efficient. Emily, we talked about this. Do you fly it high, do you sail farther but go faster, or do you put the hole in the water and you sail less? It's a tricky decision and it comes down to the teams deciding which mode is better in which conditions. You know, when you come into a bit more pressure, that's your time to try and pop it up onto the foils. But if it's short lived, you could just be sailing that extra distance for that puff and lose out. And here we go. Watch this lift up. Look how hard they're working there on the grinders. I'm not entirely sure how much Hannah will be doing grinding that wing sail in with uh, Luke Parkinson in front of her working even harder. From the data that we saw yesterday in the practice racing, one interesting point was that the Australians and the British, they work their grinders the hardest for those takeoffs. They rotate that wing 10 degrees more in a big pumping motion in order to get that boat to take off. So tough luck for the grinders on board. Well, I, take it, I take it back, Hannah. There she is running across the boat as she sets up for another maneuver there, but she's working hard. I think the Welsh <laughs> Gold might have words for you, Stevie. Yeah, well, that's right. I normally think of her as a real tactician, strategist, driver. But yeah, right now she's in Swiss Army knife mode and she's having to get on the handles and get working that big wing sail in and out for Ian Jensen, the wig trimmer. So it's like four of five here, the final race of the day before we move to Championship Sunday. They'll go down to the bottom of the course, back up, then back down, and then the right-hand turn to the finish. Yeah, and it's getting light out here. Todd, look, top left-hand side of our screen. Switzerland have turned around the mark in second, but they've fallen off the foils, and that's a 150, 200-metre loss to the Spanish just by falling off the foils there. As we see Spain now fall off the foils, Emirates Great Britain back up in the air, and New Zealand up to fifth, looking to 
split the turn and turn right. It's now absolutely crucial that those people flying the boats uh, on board Great Britain right now, it's Luke Parkinson, a super smooth, super silky. Otherwise, the fans are in for a bit of drama at the end of this race because if you fall off the foils, you're going to lose a lot of distance. And look, 13.3 kilometres yeah. now. It was 18 kilometres when we started in race one. I was just going to say, let's go down on the water at Lisa Darmana because the wind has dropped off precipitously. Lisa, what are you hearing as far as the forecast? And is this race going to hold on to this 13.7 that we have now or is it going to drop even more? The breeze is really pulsing, so we're having moments where it is at 13.7, but then we're seeing closer to, you know, 17, 18 kilometers per hour. So I really think it's it's the timing as you go around the gate of what pressure you are in at that time, and, and it's, sometimes it's better to be lucky. So the Swiss, you know, they, they had a tough time to go around, but the pressure where the Spanish came around, they had brilliant wind, and they've really pushed their way um, down the course, foiling most of that run. So, yeah, it's really tricky out here. It's getting harder as the day goes on, and... Um, yeah, plenty to play for still at this point, and the pressure is on for the manoeuvres. Well, Emirates GBR did not get the whole shot, but they now have a lead of more than 150 metres, with Spain now moving into second place. Australia making their presence felt in third. Switzerland has dropped back to fourth in New Zealand top five. And those teams at the back of the pack, seventh to tenth, are struggling even more now. That gap to the back, back to France, over a kilometre, and they are dropping further every minute. And they've shortened the course, Todd, so they're going to be turning yep. up to the finish here. So we're right at the end of the race. One lap less, the wind dropping, so the race management have decided to shorten the race course down a little bit, nearly ten minutes in, and that's good news for Ben Ainsley. Yeah. And in the pack, well, for Denmark, for Canada, for France, they've got a magic something on this final downwind leg. New Zealand might might have salvaged a countable result. And your Emirates winning moment goes the way of Emirates Great Britain as they get the win in the third and final race of the day. Yeah, there you go. Exactly, Ben. Quite right. Always looking about those overall points, always thinking about the race to the final tomorrow. And it's about where you're totting up those points. Do you accumulate? And there's nothing better than getting a win, 10 points. And Spain, they needed this. Was that the right move by race management to shorten the course? Yeah, I think so. Dying breeze, we're already 10 minutes in, and it starts getting confusing. If you don't, if you're struggling to make that 15 minute uh, time limit, you can see all the fans on there. They're literally finishing 20, 30 meters off the beach from the fans on the shoreline there. And we don't want to be finishing in a race at further up the course right. or, or away from those those fans so i think absolutely the right call by by ian murray and mel roberts the race management crew good decision so uh, all that technology is clearly working pretty well or they were just listening on a report from lisa darman who said the race course <laughs> well, is getting a little puffy and tricky so there you go yeah. Let's give credit where credit's due exactly. exactly if they're sensible they'll have lisa <laughs> turned up and be getting the feedback straight from her as we see there the spanish crew nicole there at the front looks a bit tired she had a big race on the handles there florian Trittle, the wing trimmer, he'll be happy. And here we go, look, top of screen, New Zealand. They're up and foiling Australia off the foils. If New Zealand can get a third here, this would be Harry Houdini from Peter Burling and the crew. Let's watch this manoeuvre on board New Zealand. If they stay on the foils, I think they'll be round Australia and take third. If they fall off, well, let's anyone's guess. Right of way is with Australia. They're entitled to turn on the inside here. This is going to be close. 30 kilometers an hour is the magic number, Todd. I think they're not going to keep themselves foiling or get foiling. So advantage Australia. What a first day for and, Jimmy Spiddle. And look how tight Jimmy Spiddle hugging that key. Pete's, Pete's going to go around him. He's going to take it wide. And Spithill comes in tight, brings the green and gold in there. And both holes now in the water. So it's going to be a slow drift to the finish line. But look at this. The Kiwi's still going twice as fast as the Aussies. Yeah, but your trouble is, Todd, that big wing sail that Carl Langford's controlling there. It's just throwing turbulent wind back towards New Zealand. So there's absolutely no opportunity. If New Zealand had stayed on the foils, they had the chance. Then you've got the extra speed. You've got what we call apparent wind, your own wind. And you just can keep that speed and hope to fly around the outside. But yeah, Jimmy's no mug. You oh, are getting past him here. No question about it. So Jimmy Spithill steps in. They go three. One, three. That's a pretty decent report card to send back to one Tom Slingsby. Yeah, I think Tom will be relaxing wherever he is right now. I'm sure he'll be pretty relaxed about his uh, franchise looking good for another good performance. They're already a long way out on top of the leaderboard. They're already on 43 points this season, some seven points ahead of the second place, Denmark. And right now, Denmark back in seventh, possibly struggling to even make the final here as it sits. And while we have a moment, we're talking about Australia. Let's send our best out to Tom Slingsby yeah. and his wife and their family as they await the arrival of 
of number one. So, well, uh, I imagine, Todd, if we're honest, there's a lot of uh, the drivers and teams in this fleet hoping that baby's not going to be a big uh, sleeper so that Tom Slingby's <laughs> made a bit tired and, uh, and and perhaps makes it a bit harder for him to give out these performances. But, uh, but yes, what a, you know, we wish them the yeah. best and what an amazing thing uh, that'll be for them. Tomorrow, and for those of you wondering, yeah, Tom Slingsby is tomorrow. scheduled to return to the next event, which will be in Abu Dhabi coming up January 13th and 14th. As Germany has a nice bounce back, they go from being DQ'd to finishing in fifth. Yeah, good. Good performance. They did sail well. That's Stuart Biffle, wing trimmer there, just already debriefing. They did sail well. The manoeuvres look smooth, and you just got to give yourself the opportunity to yeah. make those places. Switzerland, where well, it's been a bit of an average day for the Swiss. They look so good in the first race. They're in the pack. Still got a chance of making the final, though. I think we're going to see a lot of teams very congested on the leaderboard, other than maybe Australia and Jimmy Spittle, who've had a fantastic day. Emily, I always say the third race on day number one is always like the stock market. Who's trending up? And I'd say right now, Great Britain is certainly a team that is trending up. Australia certainly has been in the running all day long. Definitely, and it's something we've seen with the Brits before, where you know, they do underperform in those first couple of races, and then we see on day two them just come and steal the show. And the French come in in seventh place. Content de la Pierre just moments. I mean, we're talking just a moment of wasting of being number millimeters one position. Top. Yeah, millimeters. I mean, they just pushed harder. And you heard a, a cry. Yeah. Uh, I think technically it was slightly uh, industrial French language we heard as he came across the finish line. But that was just the pure frustration they had there. He just pushed a little bit too hard. He was flying the boat, so he's multitasking. He's thinking tactically. He's doing all the rest of it. But he pushed a bit too hard jumped the boat out of the water and that was it and, and and was that the season in that moment if they made the final here they'd surely save the season but have they now made it hard Canada finishing in eighth place so they go one three and eight you're always allowed one bad race out of the five you want to keep it out of the nine ten region so Canada may have done that and they can be able to bounce back of course when they come back tomorrow for the two fleet races before the event final the Americans look like they could hold on to ninth with Denmark something went wrong there they'll finish in tenth And we now go down on the water. The winning team from race number three here at the Emirates Dubai Sail Grand Prix presented by P&O Marinas is, of course, Ben Ainsley and his team. Ben, you go four people on crew, and then you bounce back nicely. You guys started off with a fifth, then you get a seventh, but a great way to finish day one. Take us through today and how it went for you guys and what you look forward to tomorrow. Bad right. So, yeah, tough getting out of that mark. Huge teamwork as always with these boats and to power output for uh, five foot two. So that's why she's in the gym all the time. Hi there, uh, Ben. That was yeah, good good performance and uh, thanks for joining us. Good luck tomorrow. Be uh, should be good overnight. And looking back at the start, from a way out, we could see Australia had a big stretch to go to the line. They're setting up for that slingshot like the Germans in the previous race, but a little bit further back. And it was quite clear early on that the French weren't going to let that happen. So Australia go behind them, dip behind, leaving the gap open for French to get the start that they wanted. This was also the Rolex best time start of the day, 0.2 seconds behind for the Swiss, nailing that start. Let's look at the numbers now from that race, and it's pretty clear to see how Emirates GBR took the win. Five and a half kilometers distance sailed in that race, and only five maneuvers. The next closest, the Spanish, they sailed slightly faster, but almost a kilometer further in distance sailed. It's a brilliant strategy there by the Brits to get all of the best breeze, sail the shortest distance in the best shifts. Well, we certainly had parity across the board. Stevie, race number one went the way of the Canadians. The Australians take number two, and the Great Britain takes number three. But let's go back to this first race. It's all about that start. Yeah, it's a lot about the start, but it, it's also just the accuracy of maneuvers. And you can see little maneuvers really got punished. And Canada, well, they were pretty spot on the whole way through. 
Canada grabs the win in race number one. Race number two, interesting story. The big story, the DQ of the Germans on the bottom of your screen. Yeah, you can see them just diving in. They're just not entitled to room up there. It's, it's consistency we're seeing from the umpires. Most sports, what you hear, you just want consistency. Well, with that, they've been very consistent. And then the other thing that's pretty consistent is this green and gold boat seems to go pretty fast. Whoever's driving it, it turns out. Uh, so we certainly saw that. Australia with a new driver, Jimmy Spittle. He's done a couple of yacht races. Seems to be doing pretty well out there. And not to be forgotten, it's hard to keep a good team down. Great Britain gets the win in race three, but the big moment, France with that dip. Yeah, not a lot else to analyze in this race. I mean, just pushing that bit too hard. The higher you fly the boat, the faster you go. But look at the reactions here from the Spanish as the boat, well, effectively parked, went from 50 kilometers an hour to seven in a split second. And then after that, well, Ainsley, he managed to position that British boat in front of the Swiss, and it was just the accuracy of those positioning. And then really the story of the day was mistakes were punished really, really hard, yeah. Todd. It's very easy to have what we might call easy sailing conditions, but that means if you make a mistake, it's a big problem. Let's take a look at the standings. After three races, it is Australia out in front with their new skipper, Jimmy Spithill filling in for Tom Slingsby, who's on maternity leave. Then it's New Zealand, Canada tied for second. Emirates GBR vaults all the way up to fourth with a tie with France. And that is really the fight now for the top three. Switzerland, Rockwell, Denmark, Spain, Germany, and the USA rounding out the rest of the fleet. Big day tomorrow with two fleet races to kick off championship Sunday. Now we go down on the water and join the New Zealand squad, Peter Burling and company. Pete, you guys had a great day of racing out there. You started off a little bit rough with a sixth place, then you bounced back with a second, and of course you finished fourth in the final race. They call it an easy day of sailing, but to Stevie Morrison's point, you were punished today if you made a mistake in your maneuvers, correct? Yeah, yeah, it's super tricky in the slight air. Um, you make one mistake and you just off the back of the train yeah obviously um all our horsepower is the wind so if the wind's not there you're you're not going overly fast and um i think you're seeing uh, some pretty incredible skill by everyone on the boats you know getting their boats around the track uh, this well and such like it peter we appreciate your time we look forward to championship sunday we know you guys will be in the mix thanks again and let's set it down now back on the water to lisa darman who's bouncing around the fleet as many interviews as she could possibly wrangle <laughs> Well, guys, it's a pretty good way to kick off uh, the new campaign. Uh, how do you think it went, Kyle? Uh, it went really well. I mean, um, the last time we sailed together, it wasn't so successful. So it was nice to, um, you know, wipe the slate clean and have a good day today. And were you coaching him through it or, or did he remember how to sail with you? No, I mean, he's picked up a couple of bad habits, but we managed to iron them out uh, yesterday. And, uh, you know, Jimmy was on fire today and, you know, did a great job. Any response to that, Jimmy? Or are you just happy? It's 100% true. <laughs> I was uh, very nervous coming into the day after yesterday. <laughs> and it's quite tricky to say all four up, I guess. Um, but Jimmy, you, you tend to have a good strike rate when you're four up. Do you like um, having a little bit more control? I think the four up really requires everyone to be really multi-skilled. You know, it's just so much more in covering a lot more functions that the other two crew would have covered. So, you know, I think Natash, Kenley and Kyle just did a very, very nice job there that we could pretty much pull off every manoeuvre. <laughs> Well, thanks both uh, for chatting to me and um, good luck tomorrow. Have fun. Well, here we go, our Emirates fly better moments. And the first moment, well, has to be Australia, doesn't it? How well they sailed that boat. Jimmy Spiddle there, he's flying the boat in this situation, so he's in charge of flying it better. And he certainly did that great performance by Australia. Couldn't have expected it, really. Our second fl Emirates fly better moment, well, Rockwall, Denmark. And they've had a tough day. They had some good moments in it, and it's all about consistency and trying to put those moments together. It was getting really, really light late in the day. So keeping these F-50s up in the air was the key. And look at that, flying the boat super hard there. Rasmus Kostner there, big moment. Great day for a lot of the teams. And today's Piano Marina's fastest speed record goes to the French team with 63 and a half kilometers an hour on that reach in race three. Unfortunately, that was followed by that nosedive, but pushing the limit to go as fast as they can. 
So day one is complete of the Emirates Dubai Sail Grand Prix presented by p and Marinas. We look forward to Championship Sunday. That's coming up tomorrow. Two fleet races and then the event final. On behalf of Lisa Darman and, and Emily Nagel, Stevie Morrison, I'm Todd Harris saying so long for now from Dubai. We'll see you tomorrow. Welcome to the United Arab Emirates and the Emirates Dubai Sail Grand Prix presented by p and Marinas. So here we go, race number one. The Canucks made it look easy. Wow, there's no room for the Germans. Jimmy Spittle in Australia winning race number two. Oh, Australia, oh, look at this. Oh, they pushed it too hard. Emirates, Great Britain, and they get the win in the third and final race of the day.